And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Edward Waugh. I know it says Roy, but the Canadian in me, you know, if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, Patrick Waugh, it's, I'm going to pronounce it Waugh. Edward Waugh writes, What? I'm going to assume that you saw the recent remarks from director Patty Jenkins about streaming movies. Oh, I absolutely saw it. I'm sorry, she said. They look like fake movies to me. I don't hear about them. I don't read about them. It's not working as a model for establishing legendary greatness. Are her, are her direct words. To me, she's saying that streaming kills movies, not that the movies themselves are bad. What are your thoughts on her comments? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And of course, Patty Jenkins... Uh, tremendous director. She directed Charlize Theron to her Oscar Academy Award win. Uh, that was her directing her that got uh, Charlize her Oscar. She, of course, smash hit with the first Wonder Woman. Not so great with Wonder Woman 84. Let's be honest. It didn't do a great job on Wonder Woman 84. But, you know, her track record is really solid. And, and you know, we've been hearing a lot of great directors from James Gunn, Denis Villeneuve, Christopher Nolan, uh, on and on talking about the the pitfalls and if, if you talk to Disney and to Christopher Nolan, the evils uh, of streaming. So Patty Jenkins was directly asked about this and she said the following comment, a comment that I think a lot of people are taking out of context and not interpreting properly. But basically this is what she said. Again, this is what was written in the email, but this is her direct quote again. Are you seeing it? All of the films that streaming services are putting out, I'm sorry, they look like fake movies to me. I don't hear about them. I don't read about them. It's not working as a model for establishing legendary greatness. It's not working as a model for establishing legendary greatness. And I'm going to tell you right now, she is a thousand percent right. But like the person, like Mr. Waugh, who wrote in the question, um, I agree. People seem to be misinterpreting what she's saying. It seems to me like people are saying, are interpreting what Patty Jenkins is saying as saying, any anybody that makes a movie for streaming, the movie is shit. That's not what she's saying. What she's saying is, is that the model of putting things out on streaming is undermining and ruining them and not giving thing anything any sort of a foundation. And, and I think she's absolutely right about that because here's a great example. When a movie comes out theatrically, Rob, you've talked about this before. You said it, it comes with a sort of gravitas that it has for being a theatrical film. It gets into the cultural conversation. It stays in the co cultural conversation. People still talk about Moonlight. People were writing actually just the other day on the show, writing and asking about Moonlight and talking about La La Land and talking about, you know, back. somebody wrote in the other day talking about Backdraft and talking, and talking about all these movies, right? You know what nobody's talked about at all? I don't I don't think I've had a heard of, had a single literally. I don't think I've had a single person write in ever since the day it opened. Maybe a, a few days after it opened about this. It's a movie that I believe got nominated for best picture, I think. Mank. Mank is uh, Mank is one well. of those <laughs> rare great streaming movies. Like it's one of the 1%. It's one of the 1% of movies that go straight to stream that are actually any good. But a few days after it comes out, nobody's talking about it anymore. It's gone. It's just poof. It's disappeared. Hell, even Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League cut, right? The one they did for HBO. People talked about it for years. A week after it came out, it was gone. It's just not in the conversation anymore. Except it comes up in the conversation for all the wrong reasons sometimes. But a week, a week, and it was gone. Movies that... that play in theaters become cultural events movies that go straight to streaming become momentary uh momentary commodities that come and go within a matter of a few days and it's gone and when patty jenkins says when she makes a contest says it's not working as a model for establishing legendary greatness she is one thousand percent correct she is a thousand percent correct. You don't hear about them. You don't read about them. They come and they instantly go. They come with some fanfare on the days they launch. And then within a week, they're never spoken of again. And they just disappear. Now, a lot of that has to do with 99% of these movies are complete, utter shit. But even the really good ones, films like Old Guard, which never gets mentioned except for the fact that I keep bringing it up. 
films like Old Guard, films like Mank, films like uh, Tri the Chicago 7, which is amazing, and nobody talks about it anymore. If it was theatrical, people would still be talking about it. I think if the Zack Snyder Justice League cut was theatrical, I think it would still be part of the conversation. But it's not. They just come and they go. And I think people misunderstood what Patty Jenkins was trying to say when in actuality, inconvenient truth time, folks, what she said is absolutely 100% correct. She's absolutely right, at least in my opinion. Anyway, Rob, you had a chance to see Patty Jenkins's. Patty Jenkins, who had one of her movies dumped on streaming, by the way, with Wonder Woman 84. Not that it was a great movie. But, Rob, you heard Patty Jenkins' comments. How do you interpret what she was saying? And, and what amount, if any, validity do you give to it? You know, I have to say, we've talked a lot about Netflix streaming movies on, on this show. You were talking about them two days ago, about the two movies that you'd watched. And I watched the trailer for Red Notice this morning with Gal Gadot, uh, yeah. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, and, and uh, Dwayne Johnson. And when I was watching the movie, I mean, it's handsomely made. Uh, it looked, the acting, it looked funny. But I'm watching this and I was thinking, I should love this. But I don't. I didn't either. Mm. I, I and I I don't love this. And I thought it was really pedestrian. There was it looked like it was ten other movies mashed into one. And I think about you know what it reminded me of maybe, maybe because they're stealing high end art. I think about uh, John McTiernan's the remake of the Thomas Crown Affair. I love that movie. I it was breezy fun. I it looked great. I I saw it in the theater and I'm like I. It was just a great time at the movies. Kind of was supposed to have that vibe. It looks to me like this movie was trying to emulate a real movie. And mm. I read, you know, Patty mm. Jenkins' comments, and I'm like, that's kind of how I feel about a lot of these streaming films. Like, look, dude, I liked The Old Guard, but it felt like it was a pastiche of a bunch of other movies, beginning with Highlander. It's not that it was bad, it just felt unoriginal and it was competently made. It was perfectly it was well directed. It was shot at beautiful locations, but there was nothing new about it. And I think what I'm waiting for is I want to see, I mean, streaming unfettered from box office constraints, they don't have to appeal to the masses. And yet they feel like they're all designed by committee. And, and that's what they're doing. I'm waiting. I want to see, like, Mank was at least unique, and it was David Fincher, and it was, whether you liked it or not, it felt original to me. But none of the, I, I get excited for these Netflix movies, and then I watch them, and I'm like, eh, eh. Man. And I don't, I, I, I think I understand what she's trying to say. I, I think when I can watch a Netflix original movie and say, eh, that's actually a good day. Normally, I'm smashing my face in the fridge saying, why did I just waste two hours of my life? Anyway, uh, but that, that's just me. That, but, and that is separate from what Patty Jenkins' point is. Aaron, you know, uh, again, I, I personally did not interpret, when I read Patty Jenkins' statement, I did not interpret it to her as saying, as her trashing on other filmmakers, I personally interpreted it as her trashing on a system that's taking the work of filmmakers and doing something like that, and the fact that it makes these movies disappear and gives them no relevance. That's, that's at least my interpretation of what she was saying. So, Aaron, how did you interpret her words? And same questions I gave to Rob, what, if any, validity do you give to what she was saying? Well, first of all, I am clutching my pearls because I am shocked. I am, I am shocked and aghast that a woman expresses her opinion out loud and people take it and misinterpret it into something else that she didn't even mean. That has never happened in the history ever. of women speaking out ever. Now, so Aaron, first of all, Aaron, I, just, Aaron, I Aaron, cannot believe Aaron, this has happened Aaron, to our dear Patty. I think you're yes. just having a woman moment. <laughs> I think you're getting over emotional. Take a deep breath. I should probably a woman moment. I mean, There's a clip from the show that's going to be played a lot. <laughs> Aaron's. I would only a say that moment. to Aaron. Let's be clear about that. Only when probably, she's not in the same room with me. Probably having her. It's probably her cycle. Um, yeah, oh, I'm having no. a woman. <laughs> Oh, Rob, you haven't. It, it was much worse than things he was saying to me last week. Trust me. Um, Let's all so, move to Texas. <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> wow. So, uh, no, no, okay. 
I, I, I also agree with you, John. I see what she was saying, which is absolutely that. It's, it's, it's a system that is set up to fail. If it's one thing, if a movie is created with the intention of it being in the theaters and because of the situation that we're in with the pandemic and, you know, we go, okay, well, I guess we have to release this in theaters and on streaming. That's a different thing. Um, you know, I mean, I remember when I saw a uh, uh, parasite, you know, parasite was a brilliant movie, one best picture. Um, but it was not a movie that was made for streaming. The move, these movies that are made specifically for streaming, um, they and, and, I, and I don't know if it's because the generation and I include myself in this, the generation that grew up on, you know, movies of the week and TV movies, there was always a, kind of a, a, a subpar connotation because let's they were subpar. But even if they weren't the uh, the the idea of them was like Babes in Toyland was such a. Uh, a movie that really hit home for me in a lot of ways. Um, it really makes me feel nostalgic, but it was a movie of the week. And I wonder if it might have a different resonance long term and a different place in movie history if it had been a traditional Christmas movie that came out in theaters. I don't know. But so I feel like the the movies made specifically for streaming have a connotation of a movie of the week. Additionally, we've talked a lot about when it comes to streaming series, the ones that are released week by week versus the ones where you just can binge the entire season in one thing in, in one go, the ones that are coming out episode by episode, like I believe stranger things does. We talk about it week after week after week. Whereas if it just, and th that's what happens in when a movie is in theaters, you know, a lot of times people are going on the weekends to see movies. So we look at those weekend box numbers weekend after weekend, it retained those numbers. Those are those things that people, you know, on, on our side of things are looking at. Um, but we're not doing that with the numbers of streaming. So I feel like there does come this sort of dump. We, we dump it all out on the viewers. We go, OK, great. Seeing that, check it off the box and go. And one of the things that stood out for me last week at CinemaCon was, you know, in listening to the presentations by the different studios that came up over and over and over again was how films need to be seen in the theater, not just because they're on a big screen, but also because of the complete immersive experience that you get. And unless you have the discipline sitting at home to turn off all of your other devices, to hold your bladder, I'm talking about myself here, because you all know that I have a bladder the size of a pea, to not let anyone else in your home speak or make noise, get up, get food, do anything, let the dog up. You know, it's so distracting to watch a movie at home versus the immersive experience that's in a theater. I think it's almost impossible for any movie to really live up to the theatrical experience. And so, yes, I fully believe that Patty Jenkins was saying, and I don't think it's a matter of interpretation, Anyone who wants to interpret that she was shitting on movies, you're just creating your own narrative. That's not what she said. She specifically was talking about the streaming uh, platform and the way that it has, you know, negatively affected a business that, let's face it, she's very much ingrained in. So why wouldn't I mean, it, it only benefits her to continue to speak positively about the theatrical experience. She's a theatrical director. So I agree with her and I don't think there's any room for misinterpretation of what she said. And it's kind of funny too, because a lot of people are trying to dodge what she's saying. Cause I, I saw this when I put this out on Twitter last night, everybody wanted to jump saying, well, she made Wonder Woman 84, which wasn't any good. And I love everybody's trying to change the co topic of conversation. That's irrelevant. Yeah, that has to, nothing to do with it. It's irrelevant right. to, to the conversation, which she also made movies that won Oscars. So, I mean, there's that, but uh, I, I just, again, it's an inconvenient truth, but it's true. What she's saying is absolutely true. And, and it harks back to the other thing, too. We were talking about this. The studies were done. Movies that premiere exclusively in theaters first and then later go on to various forms of home video do better on home video than if they went straight to home video. Follow that again. Movies that play theatrically first in a theatrical exclusive window and then later go to streaming and Blu-ray and DVD and PVOD, they actually perform better 
on those home video markets than movies that bypass the movie theaters to go straight to home video. It's actually better for home video if they play or if they are theatrical films. And I think that's part of what Patty Jenkins is getting at. At any rate, guys, question is for you. What did you think of Patty Jenkins' comments? Uh, how did you interpret them at first? And if you interpreted them correctly, uh, do you think what she's saying has validity? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Whatever it is you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.